I know something's wrong. There's nothing wrong. When you're finished, we'll go buy you something nice. What would you like? We'll go somewhere nice to eat, okay? Did you see that guy in there, Spots? You don't have those, do you? No. Then you don't have anything to worry about. She said they can be inside you, oh, too. They're not inside They're you. inside me. Will you stop? Why are you convinced you're sick? Miss Bruce, he's supposed to be here. Hello, I'm Alistair Newton, and I'm speaking today with Joel Greenberg, the director of Studio 180's upcoming production of Larry Kramer's The Normal Heart, opening at Buddies of Bad Times on October the 14th. What is it about Kramer's politics that, that attract you to either to him or to the play specifically? There is something immediately visceral about The Normal Heart, and that its people are people, and not just mouthpieces for the playwright. I think probably most of all what got, you know, the, where I immediately felt I had to contact Buddies and uh, the rest of the 180 group, is that Kramer allows other people to speak for themselves. And that seems, continues to seem to me really fascinating because he wrote a play at a time where he didn't, his reputation is that he had no patience for anybody who didn't sign on to his position. And yet in the play, there are several people who don't agree with him and who are very, uh, very articulate about why they disagree or what they believe is the right course and mm. the right position to take. And I found that the most fascinating piece, that in a piece that could so easily become a rant, could easily become polemic and nothing but, it isn't that at all. The people are larger than the issues, which says something in a play that deals with those issues. I know something's wrong! Greg, all you've come for is some test yourselves. Now stop being such a hypochondriac! I'm tired all the time. I wake up in swimming pools of sweat. Last time she felt me, she said I was swollen. I'm all swollen, like something ready to explode! Stop! Were you aware of Larry Kramer's work as an activist or as a playwright before you got involved in the show? Somewhat, yeah. I mean, I'd, I read Faggots, uh, which I struggled with. Um, I, for, for the people in the audience who don't know it, Faggots. It's, it's, Faggots, I believe it's Larry Kramer's first, first f fictional book. I, yeah. I mean, I, I know he's done a lot of writing over his career as an activist and as a, as a public uh, figure, but um, Faggots was kind of the first book that fictionalized but also brought out into the mainstream the kind of the secret lives of gays. Um, and... Uh, and it would, it, stirred up a lot of controversy um, with its openness. Uh, the stories about sex parties and Fire Island madness. Then The Normal Heart was given to me by a friend about six months before I even knew that I had an audition for uh. this production. They keep getting bigger and bigger and they don't go away. I sold you a ceramic pig once. At Maison France on Bleecker Street. My name is David. Yes, I remember. Somebody I was friends with then collects pigs, and you had the biggest pig I'd ever seen outside of a real pig. I'm a 28th case, and 16 of them are dead. Mickey, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. So Kramer was sort of like, uh, sort of said that Ned Weeks, who's the character that is sort of loosely based on himself, that yeah. he he's almost um, he's almost a pastiche on Kramer. Like he was trying to write this sort of hyper uh, articulated version of himself. Yeah, it's, I mean, and it's not loosely based. I mean, he, he in fact, there was something um, that Kramer had seen. I got an email about a week ago because he had read something somewhere, I don't know if it was related to our production or others, somebody referring to the play as a semi-autobiographical portrait. And he wrote to me and said, can you please make sure that your production in no way uses this phrase? He said it is autobiographical. Mm. There's nothing semi about it. Right. And he also mentioned the names of people who were prototypes for several of the principal characters in the play. He thought that was that it was important and essential for people to know this really happened. These people really existed. They're not a fiction. I'm sure there are elements of conflation, but really these are, these are the people and this is what they did and this is what they said and this is what happened to them. And he was famous for being outside the theater after performances oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. at the public with yeah. statistics and with... Oh, he did that on Broadway as know, well. Letter in hand, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How's John? John. 
John who? You've had so many, I never remember their last names. Oh, you mean John. I'm with Gregory now. Gregory O'Connor. The old gay activist? Old. He's younger than you are. Do you think Kramer was right? About? About the crisis and, and about um, his sort of central uh, thesis in the play, which is, you know, we need to stop having so much sex. Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I think, I think his position was we have to we have to take response. Well, I think there are two positions that he really that drives Ned. One is we have to take responsibility for what we are doing to each other, because there is a, there's an exchange with one with the one younger man in the group who argues that his life is his own. He said, I have the right to kill myself if I want to. And Ned's argument is, yes, but you don't have the right to kill me. So I think that's a hard one. And I've heard the arguments on both sides. Mm -hmm. I understand Kramer's argument. But he has, he has a different, he, he has, I think, a far more potent argument in the play. And that is that I, he says, I believe that a gay community has to be about much more than just sex. He said if that's, because that is what he returns to again and again. He said if that's it, if that's all we have to offer, what does that say about us? Oh.